Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, Blizzard uh, hotfixed a socket item into the game, so that was cool. This is great news for anybody that, like me, has been getting questionable options in their great vault. So here is the full text and layout of what they have done. You will now get more currency tokens than before, assuming that you unlocked at least three options in your vault. You will now get six of the tokens, and those tokens can be used to purchase way more different things. There's just a bonanza of different currency options available now. You can get Genesis Motes, you can get Enlightened Rep, you can get Renown. But the thing that you are most likely to want to get and hold on to if you choose to not take a piece of gear from your vault is you can spend six tokens tokens on a ephemeral laced socket item. This is the new patch version of the thing that we spent 9.1 uh, saving up Archivist Codex research for, and now you will be able to collect them and save them up whenever your vault doesn't have anything worth taking for you. Or, you know, if you're just like lucky or something, I suppose you get them at the end, you know, later on in your gearing process after you've already gotten all the upgrades out of your vault, but you know, good for you, congrats. <laughs> you can also still use your currency tokens for anima and the old like Stygia and whatever, but if you are gearing up in the current patch and you're working on your endgame set, then I would strongly encourage you to save for socket items. I am flabbergasted that they just like hot fixed this in a couple weeks into the season, especially when it was such a central part of the endgame grind of the first two patches of Shadowlands. But I do think that this is the best version of a socket item system that we've had because it means that you don't have to like pray to get lucky and proc sockets on the items that can have them. You can get your best in slot piece and be excited about it even if it doesn't have a socket. And you also don't have to go and engage in a completely separate endgame grind in like, you know, Venari dailies or Archivist Codex research. You can just kind of play the game the way that you were already doing and then after you're done getting gear upgrades or if you have an unlucky week, you can get the socket item the same way that you've been doing any everything else without doing any like extra work. If you can't tell from the bitterness in my soul, I do already have one of these and I've stashed it in my bank, but it's better that than having the currency go to waste. So that's something. I do think it's funny though that Genesis Motes are one of the new currency options that you can exchange a token for, but one token will get you 25 Genesis Motes, which does not really feel equivalent to like the old 500 research or even the anima value. 25 Genesis Motes is nothing. I don't think I'd look at that until after I had a full set's worth of socket items stashed away, but I do hope that they bump that up a little bit. Maybe nobody will need them anymore by then, but 25 is silly. Uh, moving on, other things this week. Sandworn Relic changes. This is another good one. Um, they are now basically doubling the output of Sandworn Relics from the various sources, including the World Boss and the Cache. Roughly, here are the exact numbers. Um, if you've missed it, these are the currency that you need to buy the 246 gear from the vendor at Pilgrim's Grace. And it was kind of like in an awkward spot because by the time that most people get enough Sandworn Relics to buy a piece, almost everybody's not going to need one anymore because you've either gotten a better item from Vault or Mythic Plus or Raid, or even if you're not doing any of those things, you can get better gear than this just from dailies and from world quests if you get your Cypher research far enough. I don't know that many people that still need the 246 from Sandworns, but now that the items are dropping more quickly, it functions a little better as a catch-up mechanic for somebody that is coming in late or trying to get going, you know, at least until they get their Cypher research farther along. I do think that if you are trying to gear up, don't stress too much about the Sandworn Relics, just farm as much, especially now with flying, farm as many Cyphers as you can, and don't forget to get that item for 50% more Cyphers once you, as early as you can, I'll link that tip. Um, below. Once you get your Cypher research level to rank 6 by spending enough Cyphers at your board, you will start getting 252 items from World Quests and from Dailies, and those items can have the extra Cypher equipment bonuses like Shrouded Caches and the Jump and like extra damage and stuff, so that is better than Sandworn Relics, and I would encourage you to chase that instead. Just grind Cyphers, you know, get that buff you know, pick yourself up like a Jiro Genocide buff so you get some extra Progenitor Essentia, and then just smash treasures, just do laps. Try not to get zapped off your mount, it's dangerous. Another quality of life change this week, the Castle Nathria Legendary Memories are now able to be purchased without ever going into the raid. So if you need a Legendary Memory and it comes from Castle Nathria, you do not have to suffer through LFR or like trying to find a pug anymore, uh, or, you know, trying your luck at the random Legendary. You can now just purchase them right off Rendell, either inside Castle Nathria if you happen to be inside, or Rendell is also now present in Haven, and you can use the same currency that you've always been able to to buy the catch-up items, so like 
like grateful offerings is an option. Um, there's a couple more here I'll put on the screen, but if you are like getting a new character off the ground or you are coming in late and you need a legendary memory, you do not have to raid Nathria. You can just buy it off Randall at Haven and that's much, much easier. Other things, flying is now available, as we mentioned. So if you have not yet unlocked your Xerath Mortis flying, check your Unlocking the Secrets achievement to see if there's anything that you still need. Uh, it is all now doable and there's no time gating or anything. You can come in late and you can smash it all out in one big long day if you want to. So get yourself in the air. And another news tidbit, word on the street is that there have been reports of the Brutosaur reappearing in the Black Market Auction House. It had not been sighted since July, um, but the, I've heard that they're back. So if you're looking out for one of those, then get your gold cap ready and start checking in on that black market auction house again. Over in the race to world first, things continue to be happening and exciting and very fun to watch. I just saw Liquid get their Anduin kill. That was super, super cool. And now they're starting to get into the bosses that were not um, PTR tested on Mythic. So I'm really excited to see if there's any like big surprises in the last three bosses in the race. It's starting to actually overlap with the Arena World Cup streams. Those have started now too. So lots of good wow to watch right now. And then in my life this week, my own raid has progressed a little bit. We are now 10 of 11 normal and 3 of 11 in heroic. I have now seen the last three bosses, at least on normal difficulty, so I'll start getting those guides together as soon as I can. There were lots of nerfs that came in that made raid progress a lot easier. And then also people that are not me have been getting like their tier and their two set bonuses online, which also helps a lot with like making reclear really quick. So that's been that's been good. I'm really enjoying Sepulchre. I think this is my favorite raid of Shadowlands, even if it is being incredibly stingy with me and any tier at all. I even did LFR. I never do LFR and I did LFR this week and last week trying to get like tier legs off of Holandras. And I am still part of the zero pieces of tier club. So if if you are feeling behind because you haven't seen anything yet, um, I'm, I'm right there with you. We can cry together. <laughs> And then questions from this week. Jason wants to know, I am already at 252 from last season. What can I do with Sandworn Relics? Uh, so far, I don't think there's anything else I can do with them. So it's a good question. I am right there with you. There is nothing else to spend your Sandworn Relics on aside from the gear. I am still going to buy the Sandworn gear just for the appearance. It is a unique color of the Corthia gear, not Corthia, Xerath Mortis gear set. So I'm basically just getting it for the Mog, but I think that there's going to be an awful lot of people that don't need the gear anymore by the time they can afford it, even with the changes. I suppose if you were an enchanter, you might be able to disenchant the pieces, but that's probably not the fastest way to get shards. And then Florin asks, now that all the Shadowlands zones are out in their full glory, which zone is your favorite based on either aesthetic, lore, layout systems, etc.? Uh, before the current patch, it probably would have been Bastion just because I really enjoyed both how nice the Tyrion teleport system was and also how bright and lovely everything was. But now it's got to be Xerath Mortis because not only is it gorgeous and I can fly, I like that the outdoor systems are very much kind of a... Your, your, your must-dos are very short, and then your want-to-dos are a lot longer. I feel like they've taken the things that people would consider chores, the stuff that you have to do to be ready to go for your raid and your keys and whatever, and those things can be done very quickly. But then if you want to engage more with the zone and you want to farm the pets and the mounts and you want to collect things, there's lots of different things for you to do out there, at least for now. I think once I'm finished with Protoform Synthesis, I will have fewer things on my to-do list, but that's just a good opportunity to actually play alts while there are is still like activity going in the season and in the raid. So um, I'm a huge fan of Xerath Mortis. I love it out there. Xerath Mortis is the first zone I think ever that I have created a specific outdoor gear set for and felt like that was a super fun and worthwhile thing to do because of the, the cypher gear effects are actually genuinely fun. Like it's not the first time they've made outdoor gear sets, but it's definitely the first time I've, I've used and then speaking of Xerath Mortis, Tomislav wants to know, is there a way to keep the Pokeboat costume on? It seems to disappear every now and then, and it stops using an aggressive stance. Am I the only one annoyed by that? It is uh, apparently tough to keep a hat on when you somersault everywhere. <laughs> My theory is that Pokepoke despawns not only when he's killed, but also if you get too far away from him. So I'm hoping that this happens less now that we have flying and that he can get on his little gear glider. I think almost all of us have had that problem where your Pokepoke will just like lose the hat or lose the aggressive stance. And I don't think there's anything to do about it other than just put it back on. But if any of you guys have solutions, please put them in the comments because I need them. <laughs> And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got a question for one of these videos, pop it in the comments and include the word question. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.